Hi, my name is Sean Tracy. I'm a landscape restoration specialist with the Metropolitan Conservation Districts. And I'm here on behalf of the Metro Conservation Districts, the Ramsey uh, Conservation District, and the Badness Lake Area Watershed Management Organization to talk about rain gardens today. Um, so um, a kind of outline of what we're going to talk about today is we're going to try to do our best to define for you what a rain garden is and, and what it's not. Um, show you a number of different types of rain gardens and they differ in not only their plant selection but in how they're designed and placed in the landscape and whether they're receiving water from something like a rooftop or whether they're receiving water from a lawn, a driveway, a parking lot or a street. Um, and then we'll talk uh, a bit about why rain gardens. What's the function and value aspect of rain gardening that's so important? Um, we'll, we'll wrap it up at the end with a talk um, about where you can go for technical and financial assistance to help design a rain garden. Um, so whether you want to do the whole project yourself or you need a little bit of help um, or you want to farm the whole project out, we'll provide some resources for you to, to uh, get you moving on your project. So rain gardens are um, a number of things to a number of people. They vary not only in their planting type, whether you're using uh, native plants or cultivars or some combination of, of the two, um, or some of them are very formal and informal, um, and some of them are positioned in the landscape differently. But the most important thing to really take home about rain gardening is it's really a multifunctional tool. It's a way to not only achieve a uh, landscaping goal, but it's a, really a great way of reducing the runoff leaving the property, improving the quality of the water leaving the property as well. Um, so um, it's a great multifunctional landscaping tool for you. What a rain garden is not, however, is a water feature. A, a popular misconception that some folks have is it's a water garden, um, but the principal difference between a water garden and a, a rain garden is a water garden ponds water for a certain amount of time indefinitely, whereas a rain garden captures water that's generated from our landscape, um, our streets, our buildings, our, our lawns, our rooftops, etc. captures it and infiltrates or lets the soil absorb wa uh, the water down in there into the soil. So as it happens, um, when it rains, water falls from the sky, starts to shed from our landscape, and comes into the rain garden and temporarily ponds about 24 to 48 hours if it's designed properly. And then over that period, the rain stops and the water absorbs or infiltrates into the soil. And then the plants help also by um, liberating some water back up into the atmosphere as well in a process called evapotranspiration. It's just taking liquid water, converting it into water vapor. A little bit about the different types of rain gardens that you see out there from a functional design aspect. Um, a typical home project is a rain leader disconnect project where you take water from the uh, rooftop as it comes down the downspout and discharges the leader comes into a, a shallow um, depressed area. It's a very flat and level basin floor rather than a raised uh, plant bed and it captures the water and lets it infiltrate. A lot of times they're designed to handle the first inch of rain that happens during a rainfall event. Another common type and much more, more and more common as the days go by here are the curb cut rain gardens where water comes down the curb line, the gutter line, goes through a grass strip or some other form of pretreatment, enters the rain garden and ponds. If the rain garden happens to fill up and more water is coming, the water simply bypasses the rain garden, doesn't overflow the rain garden, the rest just bypasses the rain garden and goes into the existing stormwater infrastructure. So these rain gardens and other rain gardens like Rain Leader Disconnect projects are really good um, supplements to existing stormwater infrastructure. They're not meant to replace stormwater infrastructure, they are there to help with things that our existing stormwater infrastructure cannot handle, which is quality treatment and volume treatment a lot of times. This is a project in the city of Portland, Oregon, where they decided to um, do a new streetscape. And instead of doing raised plant beds that need to be put on life support through irrigation, they utilize stormwater runoff through uh, curb cuts in the, the uh, side of the uh, sidewalk area and in the water that's coming down from the street, coming in a curb cut there. Water comes in, the polluted water comes in, is captured and infiltrated into the ground rather than making it into the salmon fishery in the streams in the landscape. This is a project in Blaine, Minnesota that does something similar. It's a driveway disconnect rain garden where 
water comes down from the house in the driveway, sheet flows down the, the driveway, gets captured in a trench grate, and then that is delivered to the rain garden and infiltrated there. Another type of rain garden that isn't always as intuitive, because we talk about, a lot of times about rain gardens being depressions in the landscape where water can come in and, and infiltrate, is um, if you've got a hill, you can actually make a raised plant bed. So instead of taking the retaining wall and cutting into the slope and building the rain garden out flat from there, you can build a toe of retaining wall, rough up the compacted soils, add some sand and compost, leaf compost, and build your rain garden soil there. And in this circumstance, water comes down the downspout and goes to a buried pipe, and that pipe pops up through the soil and overflows into the plant beds that you see here. So I talked a little bit about the hydrology and the different positions in the landscape. The other difference that you'll find is kind of the plant palette or the, the design of the rain gardens. And there's a number of ways that people uh, like to, uh, to do this. There's a, a kind of a naturalized look where you're using plants in less of a formal setting. Smaller groupings, maybe uh, more species, uh, maybe more natives, and a, a little more loose design. And then you can have a more formal design. This is appropriate, you know, in, in the highly formal settings that exist already, like urban settings or a, a yard that's landscaped very formally or a courtyard setting. This is a shot of a bar engineering project in St. Paul, Minnesota, that's located in the boulevard in a really tight, confined, uh, very architecturally tight and rigid landscape. Same kind of idea. Portland, Oregon, this is a site where the buildings, the, the multifamily buildings here, discharge their water to the courtyard area and you've got two rectangular shaped uh, rain gardens with something along the lines of box uh, shrub or something along those lines um, that is kept very formally. And so you can hardly tell the difference between that and traditional landscaping. And it's kind of the idea. You want to make sure it looks nice, looks uh, like it fits into the landscape. Um, another shot from Portland, Oregon, from um, Kevin Robert Perry, a celebrated landscape architect out in that, on that side of the world. Uh, it's a uh, uh, school project that took out some of their excess parking lot and retrofit into that space rain gardens using things like sedges. They're sort of like grasses, different family, but very similar that you see on the bottom there. Water comes down the downspout from the rooftop, travels down the pea gravel trench, and overflows into the sedge rain gardens there on the side. Um, not only the types of plants and the types of designs, but uh, whether it's sunny or shady. You can have rain gardens just about in any type of setting, provided there's a budget for it, and provided um, you've got a nice plant palette to work with and you've got some time on your hands. So they're not terribly complicated. A project like this is a nice weekend project. It's about 150 square feet, and it's probably about 75 plants or so. Um, and so it doesn't take too long to uh, do this style of rain garden right here. This is a shade rain garden in uh, Maplewood, Minnesota. Maplewood has put in uh, hundreds of these in the last uh, decade uh, to help with their stormwater runoff. Another one from Maplewood, this one's using all native species. So you have things like uh, Blazing Star and Rudbeckia and Echinacea and Rattlesnake Master and Asters and such in this design. Um, but it's a naturalized, uh, kind of semi-formal planting arrangement using all natives. And then you can also shake it up and use some common cultivars with some natives. It's important to incorporate maybe 50% minimum natives into the, uh, into the design because of their really deep and dense root structure that helps maintain loose soils. We're trying to infiltrate water and if you, if you put in plants that are highly cultivated, you sometimes run the risk of losing that complex root structure that helps um, infiltrate water. So keep that in mind when you're doing your planting designs.